CSS links. With CSS, links can be styled in many different ways. Links can be styled with any CSS property like color, font, family, background. You know what? Let's just get into it. Let's not talk too much. So, we'll go back here and let's create a new document. So, I will call this 011-11 link dot html and we can copy everything from icon and just paste it in here then we can delete all we have inside of the body <coughs> body tag also uh, should we leave this so we can take out the icon so let's everything be blank then we can change the title to to link so remember to create a link, you need to use the link tag that is A. Okay. Then let's say something like go to Google home page. Okay. I'm creating a link. Then your href is where it's going to lead to. Href is equal to. Then inside of here, then you can put in the link where you want to visit HTTPS Google.com. So let's check this in our browser. Let's close everything we have here. I think we are done with this once. Then let's reload this. Then open link. You can see we have a link here. Let me zoom in. See, this is a link. If I click on it, let's see what happens. You see, I'm, I've gone to Google homepage. So let me go back. Now, Remember we said that CSS link can be styled in many different ways. And remember, when we created this before in HTML, there was no styling. See, we even have an underline here. Now, let's style this, right? So, let's go back. And for learning purpose, I'm going to use a class. So, I'll say class is equals to link. Okay. Then in our style, I'm going to target it using the class. So using dot link. And what do we want to do first? Uh, let's remove the underline, this underline, right? And how do we do it? Remember, test decoration. And we will say, no, we don't want any test decoration. Let's reload. You can see underline is gone and it's still a link, all right? The next thing we can do is we can change the color. We can change the color to, let's say, purple. We can do a lot. It's just what I want you to know. Remember, we said that with HTML, HTML with, with CSS links, with link, sorry, you can customize link any way you like with HTML. Okay. So I've changed the color to purple. And if I reload this, the color has changed, but the difference is not much because, you know, purple and the normal link color is blue. Now, we can turn this to a button entirely. Okay. And how do we do that? We can add padding. I will give it a padding of 5 pixel. I will give it a background of uh, background color of green. I hope that works. Green, green background color. Let's reload this and see what we have. You can see, right? But it doesn't seem to work well. So let's change this purple color purple to. Let's change it to white. And let's use a background of black. Background color of black. And let's see what we have. Okay, this is popping out now. You can see, right? go to Google home page. It's now, our link is now behaving like a button. But we can do better. What can we do? Remember our border radius. We can make this five pixel. If we reload and see, can you see? We can also move our test to the middle. So we use a word test align. You see, I'm trying to bring in everything we've learned previously. This is like even a project. You can decide to create different types of links. 
and to different types of buttons. It won't show, but it's already back in the middle. So, there is something I also want you to know, and it is called over. Over is a pseudo element. Sorry, it's a pseudo selector. So, if I say dot link over, so over is when you move your mouse over this. Let's see what happens. We can also use it to change the behavior. So, on over, we can say the background color should turn to red. Let's reload. Now, let me over. You see, if I put my mouse, it turns to red. I remove it. So, you can already get an idea of what we can do with this. There's a lot we can do with this, all right? There's a lot we can do with this. Now, looking at all this, you can see over is working. With over, you can do almost the same thing you've done here. We can decide to change the padding to two pixel when you over. So if I reload, you can see when I over, it changes. So basically, this is how you affect your your Google, your sorry, I said Google link, your links. You can also change the cursor. So cursor is that finger that shows when you over, okay? You can change it to let's say cross air. So instead of the finger, it's going to show something like an arrow. Can you see what it's showing? It's showing like a dot. Sorry, it's opened the link. I clicked on it actually. But most times, you can just leave it as it is, okay? Or you change it to pointer. So pointer is the finger or the hand. So there we have it as pointer. So you see, it's a pretty straightforward one. CSS link, pretty straightforward, and we are done with it, okay? So you can customize as much as you want. The next thing we want to talk about is CSS lists. Remember, when we talked about CSS lists, I told you how we can create all sorts of lists, right? Two types, actually, not all sorts. So we have the unordered list and we have the ordered list. Without talking too much, let's see how we can style this with CSS. So I'm going to create a new document. I will call this. 12 and this is list.html let's copy everything from link and paste it here so i'll change this to list if i'm too fast please pause the video rewind watch again take notes okay take notes that's the only way to remember all this when you want to practice on your own so we have on ordered lists and ordered lists and the css properties can help you to change the list markers and even the background colors of lists so without talking too much about this which i don't like to do let's get to it okay let's do it so first i will create two lists yes like our recipe right so something like uh so first, let's create an unordered list. And let's just write out what you would need when you want to cook jollof rice. So you need rice. So let me duplicate. You will need pepper. You will need seasoning. You will need meat. Then let's create a ordered list, okay? So let's just put, let me make an H2 here. I will say cooking steps. I could just copy this, so let's do it, let's do it. Precious, don't be lazy. So ordered list, then let's create an L1. This is not a good way to cook, oh. so boil water. Add 
rice, add pepper, and add meat. I just want to create something fast. Okay. So we have cooking steps and the one at the top should be what? It should be cooking ingredients. So let's check this out on our browser. List, close link. So you see we have it already, but now it's looking like what we did in HTML, right? So let's bring it to life. Let's bring it to life. And how do we bring this to life? Very, very simple. We can style this by targeting the different elements. So the first thing first, let's target our H2 element. So we just style those ones just for styling sake. I will say H2. Test align. Center. Color. I want to make it black. Oh, sorry, white. I like white and black a lot. Background. Background color. I will now make this black. I want you to learn something, so I'm just trying to type out all this. I can have a border radius <clears throat> of three pixel. Then I can have a padding of five pixel okay so let's see what happens to our h2 tags so you can see we have this now for our h2 tags now let's do why we are here let's target our lists so the first one we want to check out is going to be um let's work with the first one the unordered list So UL, let's use the name. So UL, you can change the list style. So currently, it is a circle, right? You can change it to square. What do you do? You say list style type. We can change it to a square. If I reload, it's a square now. Let me zoom in. You see, it's now a square. Now, the next thing I want us to do is let's actually style this properly. And how do we get into this? We can give it a background. You see, you're going to use background a lot. You can use background only if you don't want to always add color. So background, let's say blue. And the color, let's say uh, black, it will still be black. You can see the colors are black. But we can also target the individual element. So we are going to do that for the second one. We're going to do that for the second one. All right. Or we can target the list. So let's target each list item. So in the UL, we have L1s, okay? So inside of this UL, we are targeting the L1. That's what we are saying here. Inside of the UL, target the L1s. And what do we want to do to the L1s? We want to probably give them, let's say, a padding of 5 pixel. <coughs> Okay, um, we also want to change their background, probably to a new purple. If we reload, you can see we've been able to change how the style is appearing. So this is what I'm trying to say. So I can make this color white just to make it pop out. So background, then I can make them white color white the limit to your creativity is a lot you can do anything you want with css you see from 
a boring list now we have this but not to be outdone not to be outdone let's also work on this one at the bottom and that is the ol that is the ordered list this one ol so we can copy what we have for the ul we're only going to change the colors around so you have the ol and for the ol we can change the background to probably uh green we can also have a list style but it's the way it's, i want it like that so i can delete this I don't need the colors on them then i can change the padding i can give it a padding of five pixel let's reload this and see so you can see what has happened <coughs> it is almost pushing our list style you know out of the uh, the page because we gave it a padding okay but we can fix all that we can fix all that so working on this now, the next thing we would like to do is we can give it a margin left. So on the OL for each individual item, we can say margin left, maybe 30 pixel. Let's reload. Can you see? Everything is back in. So it's just there's a lot you can do there's a lot you can do it's just for you to be as creative as you want to be you understand we could even give backgrounds to them we can change this to uh, we can say background black color white and let's reload So you see, there's no limit to what you can do. So guys, this is it on you trying to style your CSS list. You can do better than me, I believe. Just be creative with the way you work with it and, you know, give it so many styles as much as you can. All right. The next thing we want to talk about is CSS table. We've created tables previously, but right now, probably want to style some so we are going to create some tables or a table and we'll just style it quickly so i'll call this table.html and let's copy everything from lists to table i'm really really excited that you are at this stage with me it may look boring now but don't give up ensure you understand what i'm doing if you don't ask questions do your own further research but the most important thing is ensure everything i'm doing does not look like magic to you i'm not doing magic okay so let's go to our browser and let's see what we can so table let's open up table and let's close up every other thing we have here how did i open your love rice okay wow so now we have our table the next thing we can do is let's style it so what kind of table are we creating i don't know let's think 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 what table should we create let's create uh let's create a table of footballers and their country and their club hmm? so first thing first you will start with your table tag so this is like a revision for you in case you've forgotten how to create a table the next thing is to create a tr tag and because we want the heading so we call this one th okay we call it th and uh, so this is going to be yeah let's say player yeah, let's call this player player club and country good 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 so now we can go down and create a new tr let's create our first player 
and we'll use TD because this is not the heading. The first player is going to be Cristiano Ronaldo. And Cristiano Ronaldo's club is currently Al Nasa. But like you all know, he's a Portuguese. I don't know when you'll be watching this video, but you can use any current player that you know. Okay? It doesn't have to be these guys I'm using. Or his country is Portugal. I can copy all this. So I'm using the popular players as at when I was recording this video. We have Lionel Messi. And he plays for Inter Miami in the USA. But he is an Argentine. So he's from Argentina. Let's create some more players. Uh, I will call this guy, I will use Kylian Mbappe. Kylian Mbappe, who currently plays for PSG. But he's from France. Also, let's do one more. Erling Haaland. Please, you can use any other thing. I'm just using players because I know a lot of people would be able to identify with this. And for the ladies, I'm sorry. But you can Google these guys, but I know you know some of them already. You know Messi and you know Ronaldo. So, does it matter much? I don't think so. Manchester City. And he is from Norway. He's a Norwegian. Okay. So, let's check this out in the browser. As you can see, crazy, right? It looks exactly like what we had previously when we created our HTML table. But remember, we said CSS is going to make your life beautiful. So let's make this table beautiful. Next thing is, let's give it an heading now. You know? So we say H2, let's say player bio. Okay, good. Player bio. So I'll remove the X. Now, let's style. Let's style. Let's style. Let's style. I will start with the H2. Like you know, I like to just make it simple. Background of black. Color of white. Padding of 3 pixel. Border radius of probably four pixel simple simple now that you know css stop allowing your work to be looking very basic like this just style it no matter what you see i'll style this one at the top style everything that you can style no matter how simple you want to make it make it style something so now let's focus on our table now to style the table remember we have we have the table, we have the TR, we have the TD, we have the TH. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is for the TH, that is the stop, we can give it a, its own style. And how do we target it? We say table TH. Okay. So table, then the TH. And what style do we want to give to it? um i don't know let's say padding five pixel test align let's put it to the left um back background it can be background or background color um let's call this khaki this is a color i used to like and the color of the test let's make this white let's reload can you see but khaki is not working nice so let's remove khaki so if we're using white let's say we use red okay for the background color of the table 
okay yeah this is this is nice this is better this is better now we can now style what the td or we can leave it as it is but if you notice something there is a space in between we can remove it right with what we call border collapse so let's target the table itself and let's say border collapse and we say what yes it should be collapsed so when you collapse the border there, there will be no border around our table anymore you see there's no border all borders are gone so the table is looking like one one nice and beautiful table we can also give the table a width and we can say 100 percent and let's see how that affects the table now the table is bigger you see our table is taking shape okay the table is taking shape right now now even though we've collapsed the border we still have some borders we can put in some borders like the way we want okay so for for the table for the table head th and the table td i want to add a border okay i will just say border of one pixel solid gray let's see where that affects it can you see so i've added a border i collapsed the former border then i added the one i want that is something you can do for yourself you can create borders as much as you want okay we can also have padding so that our table is looking a bit thicker padding i can say padding of five pixel you can see the table now looks nice nice and sweet you can also use that over remember i taught you over so that anytime you over over the table it will be changing color so how do we do that let's target the table td table td but it's going to be on over 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 sorry not table td table tr on over because the the tr is the row okay so we can say background of uh let's say So let's call this there's this color called ddd ash ddd i like it a lot so i'm also going to use it for the border instead of gray i'll say ash ddd is a very light shade of black or it pops out because the border is looking too thick aha so you see i've added the over the border you can see it and the over is now working so anytime i over over any of the row you can see what happens okay you can see what happens so you know that we can do a lot we can also change the fonts so for the table let's change the fonts family and we can make this uh, I don't know Georgia okay Georgia if Georgia is not there use times new Roman if Roman is not there use times or use serif so reload you can see this is it so I expect that you can do more, you can recreate a table, you can make it better than the way I've done mine, you can do anything, anything, like I said, anything is possible with CSS. Don't worry, in our project we're going to do so much, but right now it's just important that you understand, you know, how I come about some of these things, okay? So that you know that there is actually no magic going on, there is no magic anywhere, alright? So this is it on CSS table. Look at the code once more. I hope you typed with me and see where you've made any error. Okay. Pause the video, rewind it if you're confused about something. And let's proceed, guys. The next thing we want to look at is what we call CSS display. So, the display property. Is the most important CSS property for controlling layouts. So in CSS, we mostly deal with layouts. And this display is going to help you in controlling how your layout appears. So there are two types of display. 
we have the block level elements you know like the h1 the h6 the form the header and the inline elements also we have the display node that can be used to remove an element from display and you also have uh, the display inline okay that you can use to change the way an element is behaving you can also use block so we have inline block and none so let's 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 check them out let's check them out okay <clears throat> so let's create a new document and i will call this 014 block.html let's copy everything from table or let's let's use what we had from icon so i'll copy it to block you know what you can use anything let me delete everything inside take out this then just call this block so now let's proceed let's create some some quick items okay let's create some quick items and the first thing we want to do is um so we have block elements like the div sorry like the p tag so if i say lauren so i have my paragraph is a p tag which is a block element, block level element. Then also, you have your, your what's it called? You have your span, which is an inline element. So if I say span, so let's check this out on our browser. So you can put any test that you want in between. So block, so this is our span okay i can add another span so let's have two spans together but you see they will all be on one line because see but i can change all the span to block level elements and how is simple i will just say span then span display so you can say block or inline block so if i reload this page you can see they are all on one line now because i've made them a block a block level element same thing with this paragraph i can turn it to an inline element by saying p display inline You can see it's now an inline element. The behavior has changed. Also, I can remove it entirely by using display none. It's going to take it out. You won't see it anymore. This is on this first one. You see, it's gone, disappeared. That's what display none does to you. But there's another one I want you to know: visibility. The difference between visibility and display none is that visibility we still leave the item like the space of the item display none we remove it like what we have here but if i use visibility the space will be there you see the space for the paragraph is there but it's no longer there that's the difference between visibility and display none so what i've just shown you here is that with the display, you can change the way elements appear. You can change a block level element to a inline element. And you can change an inline element to a block level element. And you can remove an element entirely using display none. Or you can use visibility hidden. The item will be, the space will be there. But the item is no longer going to be there. So that is the difference between the both of them. Okay. This is becoming longer again. So... Let's cut this short here and we'll continue from CSS width and mass width in our next video. Okay, guys, nice to have you here. I'll see you in the next one.
CSS width and mass width. 